Hello and welcome to Digital Fabrication Residency Tutorial Series. This is the first of three videos which will explain how to convert a raster image into a vector line and then that vector line will be used to cut something on the laser. There's a lot of different ways to do this. There's a lot of different software. There's a lot of different materials. These three videos first will be just generally how to prepare a very simple cut. And then after that, it'll be about inlay. And then after that, it'll be about inlay and stencil. So you can see here, this is just uh, some sample cuts that we used for the demo. Eighth inch orange plexiglass. There is inlay and then there's inlay with stencil. So the first video is just going to say, show how to just get these basic cuts done. And then after that, we'll think about the offset of the vector line to make sure that they sit snugly inside of the other cut. And then the third video will be the stencil itself, how to connect it and make it one piece and then offset it and then it, it insets into the other piece. So let's go to the file. We're gonna use uh, Adobe Illustrator. Before we start bringing in an image to trace, I just want to quickly touch touch on the topic of what is the difference between a vector line and a raster line or a raster image. So a raster image is uh, pixelated and it's, it uses the pixels to make the image. It's great for Photoshop workflows, but for CNC machining, it just doesn't, it's very difficult or impossible to get information off of the image that the machine understands to cut you know, cut shapes. For this demo, we're only really going to be working with uh, vector lines uh, for cutting. We're not going to be talking about engraving or vector engraving. And more videos about the laser, we'll, you know, we'll talk about that. But when it comes to raster, you can see that this is a um, zoomed in area of the raster and you can see the pixelation. And then over here, you can see after its image trace that it's a clean line. Uh, a clean line is, it's a nice clean line, and it, this vector line could be one inch or it could be nine feet, and it still will keep that shape, um, and it, it's not based on resolution. So it's more a mathematical line equation that does that. So that said, um, the, there's two ways of doing it. You can trace it yourself with the pen tool, um, which if you want a specific shape to your, you know, like really specific, what exactly you want, it's still a better option to do the pen tool and trace. Unfortunately, it does take a long time. And if you really just want something quick to get a pattern out, get it out in the machine or get an idea, then the image trace is a good solution for that. That said, image trace does take some decisions away from you because it's an automated process. So we have our shape, we have our JPEG here, and the way we did it is file in place. And then after you've brought that in, you can see that it has diagonal lines and what you wanna do is embed it, which means that it's part of the file and if you give this file to somebody else, they'll be able to open it up and see the image. And if you did not embed that, it would ask for where that image was. It's not in, the, it's not in their computer that they're looking at. So that's just one thing that you would want to do is embed it. And then the next thing that you want to get out is Windows. And then we want to have Image Trace, which is right here. And after that, with Image Trace, I like to make sure that the preview is not checked. So I can kind of change my settings and then trace it and then see what it is and then undo it. If you do preview, it is kind of nice because it's constantly updating as you're doing the changes. But if you have something that has tons of color or lots of layers of things that it's tracing, it depends on your computer resources. And even if you have a really fast computer, it takes a while to auto trace and it's just kind of frustrating. So what I like to do is just have it unselected at first and then set what I want and then trace it. Also, this menu here, if I go to image trace, if I click on my image, it, it shows up here too. And what we want to do is kind of scroll down. So we have black and white. You can play with the threshold, which means, you know, how it determines what is black and what is white on the raster image. 
you can deal with the path, corners, and noises. Um, those you can play around with. But the one thing that we really want to focus on is pretty much um, overlapping or abutting. So overlapping is just tracing it and it has the shape and the outline of the entire shape um, and it's just one it's it's less messy um, but with the budding what it does is it traces it and knocks that shape out of the shape behind it so for right now we want just basically over um, um, overlapping and then we can just click on our thing and then we sit there and say trace at that point it is 99% um, ready to go to the laser. Depends on what laser you're uh, sending it to or what laser software that you're sending it to. Normally speaking, what you would want is to have the stroke to be 0 0.001 and no fill. But that really depends on what you know who you're sending it to. But for our laser, it basically it's that. So first you have to expand it. Because if you don't expand it, it still thinks that the JPEG is connected to the vector line. So if you expand it, now it's the JPEG is no longer there or the raster image is no longer there. And now it's purely a vector line. And at that point, I can um, expand it or I can ungroup it or I can get into the fill and stroke. And I can click on the fill and get rid of it. And then the stroke is up here, 0 .001, 0 0.001. And then you're able to send this to the laser cutter. Um, it, like again, some people have different color coordinate, uh, colors associated to the thickness of the stroke. It just really depends on um, each person case by case workflow. So that said, let's just look at two things for getting you know getting it cut we have when it does cut the nice thing about it is is that the laser curve or the thickness of the laser is so thin that it allows you to have not only the outside but the inside so you have these inside shapes and the outside shapes there is a little bit of a gap so it is inlay but it's not a firm inlay so that's that's one nice benefit from it but the other thing that is to be wary of is scale. A lot of people design things and then they cut it and it doesn't come out, especially in smaller details. So, you know, scale of design can have an imp impact on the final cut. The design, if you design something that's four inches, that design might not work if it's, if it's a half inch. And this kind of illustrates it right here. So this is our half in, uh, four inch piece and you can see that it's cut really quite nice and it has a really, really good edge on it. And then over here, one inch is still okay, but if you go down to half an inch, all that detail is just too much and the material just can't carry that detail. The material can't carry that, you know, the, the line. So here you have, you know, 0.5 the half inch and you can see again it's just kind of deteriorating so if I was going to make this design for half inch I probably would clean this up or join certain areas together so it's just a, more of a simple shape instead of all these little cutouts but still get the same idea of the design for more video tutorials about learning what is possible with digital fabrication come over to digitalfabrication.com also, if you have an idea about something that you would like to fabricate, check out artdesignfabrication.com.